So our next speaker is Rainier Vanderlee. He is a Hackaday Prize finalist in both categories, in both the press product cat category and in the main track. So that's pretty amazing, congratulations. Thank you. And he is from California, not too far from here. Uh, so. One hour, yes, Southern California. Uh, Dutch, Dutch from origin, I came here in, uh, in 2008 and uh, got a job offer in, uh, in Southern California, so that's why I moved. And then in, oh, and then in, in 2010, I decided to, uh, to buy a vineyard. So uh, this is uh, my, my, weekend, uh, uh, my weekend workout as, as it is. I spent uh, five days a week working in, in, in a corporate environment, uh, doing product marketing for computer chips. And uh, in the weekend, I'm a, I'm a farmer. So that, that's who I am. Um, my project, I, I dubbed it Vinduino. It's basically a, a mix between uh, you know, working in the vineyard and, and trying to use an Arduino to save uh, water. Uh, when I bought the vineyard in 2010, I didn't realize that uh, you know, uh, one year after, we would be uh, seeing a, a four-year drought. And uh, as such, you know, uh, water conservation has been an important personal thing for me. So the initial thing was for me to, to figure out how do I control water, how do I optimize uh, water for the irrigation in my vineyard. And uh, I started publishing information about that project on my, on my blog. And people responded to that and we got some collaboration. Uh, people from, uh, from uh, Greece responded. I had uh, a collaboration with a professor uh, in Greece that helped me optimized my code for my Arduino. Uh, some people from uh, Australia responded and they helped me understand how gypsum sensors actually work and that also helped me you know, optimize this project. So what is Vinduino? It's basically a project to save irrigation water in an agricultural setting. And this is also what this, this presentation is all about. Um, we, I've, when, when I looked at the, the, the website, web, uh, the internet, uh, Initially, when I was looking at solutions that were, ready, were readily available for uh, uh, irrigation, uh, there were uh, projects above, abundant, but uh, nobody, nobody thought about the real restrictions or the real requirements for an agricultural use. So I found out real quickly that in order to make this system work, I needed to measure soil moisture at different depths. Um, I also wanted to look at cost. And uh, because I want to measure at different depths at multiple locations, the number of, of sensors that I need to use is, is, is increasing. So sensors of $100 a piece were not, were not on my list. So I looked at the resistive sensors and I came up with uh, gypsum sensors. I'm going to talk about it later a little bit. And uh, also, uh, this, is, this is a design that needs to be useful in, in an agricultural setting. As I call it, it needs to be uh, John Deere compatible, meaning, you know, People that, that are used to work with big tools, big hammers, big wrenches, they need to be working with this without you know, this, this breaking uh, very easily. So uh, what the product came up with is, is three deliverables, basically. Uh, I developed a, a gypsum sensor uh, for soil moisture uh, me measurements. Uh, I came up with a handheld reader, and the reason is the handheld reader basically allows you a very low cost setup. You can go through the vineyard or, or through your agricultural field, measure once a day what the moisture is, and that gives you enough information to really optimize your, your solution or your, your irrigation. Uh, and uh, for people who are a little bit more lazy, I live one half hour from the vineyard, so I drive up every week. Uh, but you know, reading through the week on the line what the status is of my vineyard really gives me peace of mind. So uh, I also developed a remote sensor platform that connects to the internet, and I use uh, ThingSpeak 
as the, as the platform to give me a, a graphical representation of the moisture data. I also want to talk about uh, the results. Of course, uh, I'm a farmer, so I'm not into this for just for fun. I'm, I'm having fun while I'm doing it, but I want to save water, and I also want to sh share with you uh, what the results are from this project after one, one season of, of working with it. So how does it work? Uh, the idea is uh, the following. If you start irrigating, and, and let's look at this, this picture first. If you start irrigation, and these are uh, uh, drippers, so they, you know, in my vineyard, I have drippers that, that generate uh, one gallon per, per hour. That's, that's how they are calibrated. Uh, you see that you know, there's, there's water coming into the soil and it slowly percolates down. Uh, what, what happened was, because I, I, I am a, a weekend farmer, so I have help from a vineyard management company and they basically uh, irrigated for me through the week. And what they did was they came once a week, opened the valves, drive away, a couple of hours they're coming back, close it again, that's it. And then if, if, if the vines turn brown, oh, okay, uh, a little bit more water, that's the way they do it. And they have 40 years of experience, so they know about what, what they need to do. Uh, but what happens is, if you open these, these valves for long, you see that, that the, the soil gets saturated, uh, but the water basically sinks deeper and deeper and deeper, and then it, it gets to a point where it's below the root zone, the plants can no longer take it up, it's wasted. And, and on top of that, the nutrients that you pay for, if you, if you fertilize, go with the water as well and get wasted as well. So it's a double loss for me. And uh, the idea was, let's do it in a different way. I put multiple sensors here, and I, I measure the, the soil moisture as it moves through the soil, and I make sure that I don't irrigate uh, too long, so basically, it stops before it gets below the root zone. So you keep the, the moisture in this root zone where it's actually useful. So that is the principle. And using three sensors, you can actually uh, follow the movement of, of the moisture through the soil. So ideally, you see soil, soil moisture here, but you see dryness at, at sensor three that is placed just below the root zone. That is the, the working principle. Now, when you think about a, a gypsum sensor, which is a very simple device, it's basically two electrodes, and I use uh, uh, stainless steel electrodes, machine screws, actually from uh, Home Depot, and I cast them in, a, in gypsum, and that's the sensor. So it's a very simple device, and uh, uh, you would think, you know, measuring the resistance of such a device is not, not a very, you know, difficult thing. However, it, it proved to be a little bit more challenging. And uh, the reason why I wanted to share this is, you know, of course, this is all about sharing. So I wanted to share, although you know, this looks very simple, you know, there were significant challenges. One, 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 of course, that everybody knows about when you're talking about gypsum sensors is uh, electro electrolysis uh, and oxidation of the sensor. Uh, if you buy the, the, the cheap uh, Chinese sensors for uh, soil moisture, you notice that uh, they, they start turning green after a week, and then after two weeks they don't work anymore. Uh, this is not helpful for agricultural settings. So we came up, I came up with this, this gypsum sensor. Uh, I put them in the, in the ground a few years ago, and they're still working. So you know, at least I know that these things still work. Uh, in order to, to use them, you cannot measure them with DC. Uh, so the DC resistance is not something that you want to do. Uh, Basically, what everybody's telling you is you need to use AC to measure a gypsum sensor because of the electro electrolysis uh, effect. Uh, I found that uh, DC pulses were good, and especially if you use very short DC pulses. What I also found is, uh, uh, and you can see it here, by reversing the direction, if th this is the sensor, and this is the Arduino basically that I use, and you see that this is a setup for measuring three sensors. And uh, you see, if I wait here, that the direction is being reversed. So you measure in two directions. So you see that you actually simulate the kind of AC effect. Uh, and I use very short pulses. Uh, originally, I used uh, pulses that were directly behind each other, like, like simulating AC. I used five kilohertz as a frequency. And I later learned, as part of that collaboration with Australia, that actually, you know, doing a 150 microsecond pulse, then wait for 500 mic microseconds, and do, a, do a, another pulse in the reverse mode, gives you but much better results. So um, I, I used to test this with a resistor, 
and I got great results. And then when I started testing with a sensor, you know, things were not right anymore. And the reason was that the timing was off. So just to give you an idea. Another thing that I came up with is that uh, behind my, my house, in, in, the, in the ground, there's a big uh, transformer for the power company. So I place, a, I place the sensor in the soil, and then I measure it with a, a desktop PC that is grounded as well. So yeah, I created a great ground loop, and it took me a few days to figure that one out. Um, using a laptop, not connected was much better. Uh, so yeah, I figured that one out. But if you need to do, have a desktop PC, please use there's a USB gal galvanic isolator chips that you can use for this. So that, that proved to be a good thing. Then gypsum sensors ge generate uh, noise. So you, know, you can solve that in software, measure it a couple of times, and average it out. Uh, so that's a good way to uh, get rid of the noise. And then uh, there was another problem. If you, plute, if you have the handheld reader, you only read one sensor at a time. So when I started with the project, you know, this worked out fine. And then I came up with uh, the remote sensor. Uh, and I was reading three sensors at the same time. And suddenly, all the readings were off. So what happened was that uh, through the soil, these sensors were still connected. So I had to include, you know, I use uh, FETs here, switches to isolate the, the sensors when they're not being read. And then uh, recently I came up uh, on another, another effect. It's called a con concentration cell effect. So if you place two electrodes of the same metal in, in, in a liquid, uh, then the density of the liquid is not always the same. So the result will be so some EMF generated on the, on the electrodes. And if you're measuring like this, where you actually measure the voltage, you'll, you'll find that your readings can be off very much. So what I do is uh, uh, I, I use the software to reverse the polarity of the measurements. And if it's uh, measuring plus one volt on the other side and minus one volt on the other, the average is still zero. So that's how you, you solve it. Let's talk about the resistive sensor. So um, you have a choice always, right? You can, you can make things yourself or you can buy things. Uh, watermark sensors are the industry standard for uh, resistive uh, soil moistures. It's an improved version of the gypsum sensor. Uh, it's called a granular uh, matrix sensor because they use uh, sand instead of, instead of gypsum. And there's some little pill of gypsum to make it insensitive to uh, salinity. But uh, that's, about, that's about the difference. So let's, let's see what uh, I put them uh, in the soil and I, I basically water the soil to saturation and I let it dry out. So you see the curves here. And it means that uh, what you see here, oh, what you see here, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was pointing my pointer at the screen. <laughs> Can you imagine? Anyway. <laughs> so uh, this is the blue curve is the commercial sensor. And uh, this is the soil moisture. So basically, this is saturated soil. This is the field capacity. That is, means that uh, the, 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 the water that the soil can hold by itself without you know, fur, furthering losing soil uh, moisture. Uh, this is where you basically get to dryness where you want to initiate uh, irrigation. And this is the area where you never want to be with your plants because they, they go beyond the wilting. Uh, so you see here that uh, these sensors, the commercial sensors, will start changing their resistance real early. So if the, the soil is really wet and starts to dry out just a little bit, you already notice that. And then it follows a kind of nice curve. Um, this curve is, by the way, well documented. So you can put it in a nice formula and put it in your Arduino. And then you have a calibrated readout. Um, with, the, with the gypsum sensors, you see that there is a difference. It takes a while. They're, they're a little uh, hard hearing. So they need a little more dryness before they start working. But on the other hand, in my case, for instance, I need to irrigate in this point. So you see that there is still a nice point where I can detect with both sensors where I need to start irrigation. So my conclusion is like, you know, this, this sensor will cost me less than $1 to make. And probably if I you know, put my kids to work, it will cost less. Uh, this yeah, will cost $40 and up. You know, this $40 it was the lowest price I could, could find. So let's talk about the handheld. So uh, the first Arduino that I made was an um, Arduino Uno with uh, two resistors and uh, two uh, and a display. Um, and this is the improved version of that. So in instead of the Arduino Uno, I used this uh, this little Arduino board here, and I put it on the, on this this 
this board of, uh, that I, I uh, had made at uh, OSH Spark. So it basically is a very simple uh, electronic setup. It's an Arduino board which you place here. There's a display unit. And uh, by the way, I, I, I could sympathize with the, with the previous speaker who had to, uh, to scramble for displays just before the, the Hackaday product price uh, deadline. I had exactly the same. So I, <laughs> I was sweating. I had to send in three, uh, three prototypes and I couldn't find the display, but uh, eventually could. They're always out of stock when you need them for some reason. Lesson learned. Um, but you can see that uh, it's a very simple thing. Here's basically the interface to the, disc, to the, to the sensor. It's two diodes and two resistors. And uh, this little uh, potential meter here is to set the, the, the display. So with this, with this setup, and uh, I, I estimated the cost of $51, but this is cost when you buy one, one piece of each, right? So if you buy 100, I, I assume that you could get to $25 or less. So this, this can be used and programmed to, uh, to read out soil moisture from uh, either, you know, this is the, the gypsum sensor and this is the commercial sensor. You can use them both. Uh, this is one step further. So uh, I decided, okay, now I want to have it connected to the internet. I don't want to drive one and a half hours every time uh, when I'm, I'm worried about uh, is the irrigation doing well or so. So I came up with, with this and I took a, uh, a farmer's approach, I took modules rather than to make uh, a whole new uh, electronics design. So you still see the Arduino Pro Mini, which is the baseline. You see still, still see uh, two resistors and two diodes for each sensor input. So it's the same, it's the same concept. Uh, what you do see here is uh, six FETs that are acting as, as the isolation switches. Uh, furthermore, uh, I put in an RTC module to put the system to sleep, I have a little, uh, very small um, a solar panel and uh, a, bat a lithium uh, ion battery that I charge. So I want to reduce this, the, the current and uh, I, bring, I use the RTC to bring the system to sleep, wake it up once an hour, send the data to, uh, to the internet and then uh, go back to sleep again. So that's how it works. Uh, I have two options on the, on the PCB. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi option and a long-range RF uh, option. Uh, Wi-Fi is more for my convenience for testing. So the range of Wi-Fi is about 30 meters, especially with the hotspot that I use. Uh, and with the long range, I can, I can easily cover miles. So that's probably what, what it will end up being used for and how it's being used. So uh, it's either the, so it's either the Wi-Fi or either the, the long-range RF, but not both at the same time. Then I have some other um, inputs that uh, I, I thought were useful. So there's, there's uh, an input for a DHL of DHT11. So I use that to measure the temperature inside the enclosure and the, the relative humidity. And uh, that basically means that if, if there's leakage, if, if, if my, uh, my company is coming and they're spraying the vines and the enclosure is leaking, you know, before the electronics gets, uh, gets destroyed, I, I can correct it. So this is same. High, 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 low quality quantity price is about $87. Um, agricultural needs long range. I was already explaining about the two, uh, the two options for uh, connectivity. So with Wi-Fi, this is by the way a, a picture of the vineyard. This is the, the home that's on the vineyard. So I have one, one spot actually currently working there that is connected to Wi-Fi. And uh, what I really want is full coverage of the vineyard, so I, I do need the long range modules, even in my situation. Um, let's do a soil moisture a profile check. So uh, uh, just before harvest, I decided to, uh, to just do a, a point check saying, uh, where are we? Uh, does this system work or not? Um, and, and as you can see, I measured at one foot, two feet, four feet, and five feet. The four feet sensor uh, kind of, you know, stopped working for some reason. Probably, uh, probably uh, some kind of insect or whatever. Um, but I was able to measure at that day that uh, you know, the moisture at a high level was here, then at uh, two feet it was at this point, and then just below the, 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 the root level it was here. So you can see that there is uh, good moisture here and there's low moisture here, which was exactly what the intention was of the design. Then uh, talk about results. Um, the, the intent was to save 25% uh, 
uh, and uh, I, I use a lot of water for irrigation on, on for vines. So 25% saving means uh, 430,000 gallons. That's a lot of water. Uh, of course, you can save water uh, and then uh, compromise on the quality of your crop. That was not the intent. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what I checked as well. And then when I calculated through all the details, and the details are on the Hackaday log, you can check the details there. But I, I saved about $1,900. And the component cost that I used for, for that saving uh, was 635 so I think you know that that's a good good result, and uh, I think that's also important for uh, for uh, for a project that you you not look just look at you know the technical feasibility, but also like the economic feasibility. So I'm not done yet. Uh, we're working on uh, on a next generation, meaning that I want to include automated uh, irrigation control, controlling the valves. Uh, making it uh, connected to the internet and sharing with other farmers so we can share experiences and data. I want to thank you, uh, especially thanks for the Hackaday Prize. I mean, th this project originally started uh, with, with uh, intent you know, to make an improvement for myself, but you know, entering the prize really made it an improvement that is shared for others as well. And uh, I want to close with, uh, with something that uh, uh, I do every year. I keep, keep some of the grapes. I sell moated grapes to a winery. Keep some of them myself. I make, make some wine, and then I share that wine, and then the year after, I repeat the same process. So uh, making, making is exactly, exactly the same. I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, and enjoy your break. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yes, of course. All right, thank, thank you to Rainier. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, so we're going to take one more 10-minute break. Uh, it's been a long day. You've all been really great, really attentive. Uh, we got coffee, soda, water. Uh, there's a party coming, so you're up for it. Thank you.